Hello, welcome to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I am joined by Allison Harvey, who is the founder of 10,000 Toys for Haiti. Uh, she's got quite an inspiring story to tell, so uh, really excited to have her here. Now, later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute. When I ask my guests for their top success tip, you'll hear Allison's. Hello there, Allison. Hi. Good morning, Shannon. Thank you so much for having me on Extraordinary Woman TV. Well, thank you Very for being here. to be here. Oh, well, it's great to have you here. Now, um helping others is something that's very, very important to you. Yes. I, I think I got that from my mom. She's a big giver and I've always kind of trekked in those in her path for that. So I love giving back. Whether it's, you know, I can afford to do it or sometimes I can't, but I still do. So, you know, that's important to me. And I think it should be important to other people to give back. It could be a little bit, or it could be a lot, but just the act of giving back. Now let's talk about, um, you, you've, you've been involved in, in nonprofits for, for yeah. quite some time. <laughs> so before you launched uh, 10,000 Toys for Haiti, mm -hmm. uh, you were doing some fundraising for some other um, organizations. Yes, yeah, so a number of different organizations, again, with a tip of giving back and right. seeing where I can help. Sometimes it's not monetary, but it's your time. Right, that yeah, which is valuable. Which is like extremely yeah. valuable. People spend you know, $15 an hour, $20, and you're giving eight hours a day helping a different organization. Sure. I um, raised funds for cancer, ran okay. the marathon, Toronto Marathon. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And um, that was for Leukemia Lymphoma of Canada. Okay. So that was awesome. So that was just raised fundraising, but actually training to run a marathon for four months. So that's a lot of time inputted into that. Not an easy feat. It's Not something that I have uh, this, uh, I won't call it a dream because that's a little <laughs> strong, but I have this idea that one day maybe I'll do it, a half yeah. marathon. Yeah. So it's a lot of work, I know. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but yeah. it's also a lot of when you start off, because the first time I ran, I was like, I'm not doing this. Right. So, and then, you know, you go back and you keep going back. And the, the, the greatest moment is when you cross the finish line. Right. You know, when you, you've, four months of training, then you actually finish the race. Because a lot of people start, but they don't finish. So my goal at that time was to finish. And what I a did. sense of accomplishment. Yeah. It's great. Did you have family and friends cheering you on at the Yes, I mean, a lot of people you know, came out. Um, one of the big things for me is, and you know, people ask me after, why, why did you do it? Because I didn't know anybody with cancer at the time oh, that I did okay. it. And you know, people thought I was odd. You know, you don't know anybody. I was the only one running that didn't have anybody. And one of the girls who was training with us, she went into remission on the day of the race. So I actually put her on my shirt to support her because she collapsed and went to the hospital. And so that was my inspiration. And everybody who was in the race that day knew about it. So it ended up being really awesome. Ooh, I have goosebumps <laughs> up my arms. <laughs> so that's the well, power of giving back, you know? Right. It really makes a lot of difference. Now, uh, you know, speaking of giving back, I mean, you started uh, <laughs> this organization, which is really unique. And I, I, when I first heard about it, uh, I thought, wow, what a great <laughs> idea. Really? I wanted to have you on the show because I think it's just so cool. Yeah. So you're raising not money, but you're raising toys, toys. <laughs> yes. for orphans in, in Haiti. Haiti. Yes. And the reason I'm doing that is because everybody says it. I, you always hear it every t year. Christmas is for children. Christmas is about children. And these children, through no fault of their own, have been left homeless, parentless, familyless, because of the situation in Haiti that didn't start with the earthquake, but actually many, many years ago. And they're being born into that situation right now. And for Christmas, I just wanted to give them a little piece of happiness, a little bit of what everybody gets on Christmas morning, a gift, a toy, something to play with. Because kids being kids, play is natural to them. It's like breathing. How we breathe, they play. So I thought this would be an amazing thing to do, to collect these toys and take them to Haiti and just give them a little bit of something for Christmas. I've seen different numbers, um, uh, numbers of orphans in, in Haiti, mm -hmm. uh, anywhere. I've seen 300,000, I think you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, some relief organizations are maybe saying up to a million, million. Yeah, orphans. they don't have exact statistics right. because Haiti, um, the population of Haiti is about 10 million and counting. Over 300,000 babies are being born every year. And out of that, a lot of people are abandoning their babies, um, mothers dying in childbirth. They have a lot of diseases, cholera, AIDS epidemic. There's a lot of problems in Haiti. So these children are being born or given up 
um, with no family, right. no parents, um, nowhere to turn to, so they end up in the orphanages. So that's why the number is so sporadic, but it's upwards of 300,000, and again, it could be a million. Now, we was it the that. earthquake in, in Haiti that sparked you to want to do something? Yes, um, directly. When the, when the earthquake happened and they were calling for funds and fundraising, because I'm a big giver, right? Right. But I'm not the richest person like Bill Gates. So I decided to... Not yet. Not yet. So I decided to do something that would really make a difference. And I, toys, the idea of giving toys came to me because I grew up in Trinidad. And back then, a lot of Christmases, we didn't have anything. And I knew about the years when we did get a toy. It was great. Or when we got a few of them, it was awesome. So I wanted to give that feeling back to children so that at least they get up and they'll get one toy. They have one something to play with. The boys love the soccer balls. The girls love the jump ropes or the little things to make, the little bracelets. So it's, um, it's really wonderful to see them. So soccer balls, bracelets, jump, jump ropes. ropes. I mean, yeah. what are the toys? are you, you know, raising? Again, just like that, the soccer balls for the older boys because they stay in the orphanages till they're 18. Okay. Um, so the 14 years, 12, 13, 14 years, 15, they love the soccer balls. The girls like the jump ropes. They like putting things together, like the bracelets, the necklace, decorating, stuff like that. Games, interactive games that they can use. The one thing we don't need is anything with batteries because we can't replace them. Um, nothing for the computer, nothing sure. for the video. Makes sense. Yeah, nothing right. that's electrical. Um, Long-lasting, durable toys. That's what we asked for. To that end, we've actually partnered with um, a consultant from Discovery Toys. And um, you're able to buy toys that are durable, they're long-lasting, and above all, educational. So I, I know that, um, I mean, obviously, as, as you explained, you, you, you're raising toys yes. <laughs> uh, to give these kids in Haiti uh, a special Christmas. Yes. But you went down there yeah. this last year <laughs> yes, for the to first deliver time. the toys. Yeah. And what was that like? Um, when you start on a journey, a lot of times you're not too sure. You just have an idea in your head of where you want to get to. But actually taking the steps to get there is the most interesting. You, the people that you meet um, along that journey, when you start telling your story and when you want to accomplish. When I landed in Haiti, you know, I, it was unbelievable that I was literally there. Yeah. You know, so that was amazing. When you saw what you saw on TV coming to life in front of you, when you saw the people begging for money, when you saw the kids on the street, it, it, then became alive that this is real this is happening people are suffering people how did that touch help. you i need to do more mm -hmm. for me it's i need to do more as much as i can and i need to get the message out to people that there is work to be done one person can make a difference if i was able with what my resources i was able to help 500 children we have in toronto alone four point something million people in the gta and could you imagine if 10 percent of those people did what I did. How many children would we help? <laughs> so in your first experience then, you, you went over armed with uh, toys. Yes, Santa bags. Claus. <laughs> Santa Big Claus, bags, Allison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were the reactions from these children? And was there one in particular that stood out? Um, there was one little boy. And I remembered him because the yard where they were in the orphanage can hold about 500 children. And I remember sitting on the steps and he came and he sat on the step in front of me and he took his two arms and he wrapped it around himself. And we sat there for like 10 minutes. It's pretty special. Pretty special. Mm -hmm. Because they're basically telling you just a little hug. Just something can make a little bit of difference because they don't have it. They have food and they have shelter, but just that sense of belonging for one brief moment, it's something we can all give to them. And this is enough to keep you going on yeah. your path. Of course. I mean, right. I, I've been there. I've seen the videos. And every time I go back, it's like I'm doing it fresh all over. Every time I look at the videos, every time I look at the pictures, see the little girl dancing and in the videos you have three little girls in one of my videos and they're dancing and they're barefooted and this, this is the concert no shoes barefooted 
dust on their feet, and, and they're happy. So if we can add a little bit more than giving them something extra, why not? It's within, I think, everybody's power to give a little bit to people who are so much less fortunate than we are. So Allison, we're going to take a quick break, and before we do, it's my good to know minute, and you know, I know you've got a great tip <laughs> So my tip is to give, Shannon. Give from your heart. Give sometimes when you think you don't have, and my mom would always say that was the best time to give when you didn't have it to give, and you found it. Give because you want to. Give because you know it'll make a difference, because the universe doesn't have any alternative but to give it back to you. So in giving, you also give to yourself. Well, thank you for that. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Allison Harvey about raising toys for orphans in Haiti. Stay right there. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm joined by Allison Harvey, who is the founder of 10,000 Toys for Haiti, an organization that is uh, raising toys for orphans in Haiti. Sounds like a fantastic <laughs> cause to me. I, I love it. It's just because mm -hmm. the kids are the one benefiting the most. Not that the grown-ups don't need something to, but kids being children. Children will always be that. They want to play. They want to have fun in, in the midst of crisis in the midst of devastation. They don't understand that. They just understand what's going on right now at that moment with them. And they will kick a ball, they will kick a box, anything like that. So, so you started off with 500 toys. Yes. <laughs> and this year's goal is how many? 1,000. 1,000, And okay. we've upped the ante. Right. We wanted to deliver t-shirts as well. Okay. So we're brand new t-shirts, just like the toys are brand new, we're asking for. And the t-shirts will be given to the children along with the toys. And we also want to feed 1,000 children while we're there. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And what's the long-term goal Good. or long-term vision then? The long-term goal would be to feed, clothe, and gift 10,000 kids. So one of these years, with hopefully next year or the following year, we'll actually be able to do that for 10,000 children in Haiti at different orphanages around Port-au-Prince, outside of Port-au-Prince. My goal is to get outside of the city because those are the people that are need help the most. Right. Yeah. They, within Port-au-Prince, um, there's a lot of help coming in. And although they do need our help, we find on the out outskirts, like places like Jacmel, um, they're not getting as much help as they need. So those are the places I'm going to go to and see where I can best help those kids. So you'll be back there for Christmas this year? I'm actually going in October as well okay. on a fact-finding mission to locate a number of these um, orphanages. And then I go back in December. Well, uh, with your bags of toys? With my bags of toys. Well, I'll be taking down some in October because we've managed to raise about 400 already. Mm -hmm. So we've had about 400 toys. We have t-shirts that's been donated by a couple of companies. And we're still looking for more. So we want to get to the gold of 1,000 t-shirts and right. 1,000 toys. Now, uh, you have uh, a couple of fundraisers a yes. year, a couple yeah. of events where, mm -hmm. where you raise toys. Yes. I know that one had just passed. Yes, so Christmas in August is, is getting to be known around. Is this um, in Toronto? Yes, it's in okay. Toronto, and right. we usually have it at a restaurant, you know, or some local place, and people bring toys. It's a family event, so you can bring the children out. And this one, we had a lot more kids than the one we had last year, and the kids right. are really fascinated by the fact that, you know, what they were doing. So the parents are encouraged to show the kids how they're helping other kids. And that, at that event, we also showed a video of Haiti and my trip down there. So which really goes a long way to reach people and to let them know what the situation is. Because when we see things on TV, it's not the same. But when you meet somebody that's actually there and, you know, you hear their words and see them there, it becomes more real. That's their reality. Yeah, you, it becomes closer to home. Right. And when I do it, I see the reaction. I talk to people. People are willing to help even more. Now that they know you're physically going there, that you're on the ground, and these toys come from me to you to the kids. So it's an amazing feeling for people to be part of that. So is it possible then for one person to make a difference on this yes. planet? I'm making a difference. Mm -hmm just with a dream and a hope and with the help of other people making a difference. So one person, if you really put your mind to it, can gather up the forces and do make a difference. So Allison, how have these children 
Uh, you've gone to Haiti, you've experienced, mm -hmm. you've experienced the poverty, the extreme situations they're yes. in, devastation, um, and, and the disease uh, and whatnot, Colorado, yeah. Colorado, lack of food. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, you know, this is serious stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but here you are, <laughs> you come with toys, you make uh, a Christmas day brighter for many yes. of them. How have they touched your life, these children? Um, you want to do more. Mm -hmm. You know what, you want to be able to give more. You want to be able to share. I, I think my biggest thing is sharing and letting people know, don't forget Haiti. Don't forget uh, the children that are there that need your help. And for me, it's to look out for the kids as well, to you know, find a way we can help them not just with the toys, but with other things. Um, my other goal is to set up a school in Haiti, eventually, so that when the kids leave the orphanages, they have somewhere to go. So in Haiti, there's not a lot of education, and it's very, very expensive. So if we can help with that, that would be awesome as well. So. And you said something that's, um, that really struck me, you know, don't forget Haiti. Yeah. Um, it it's, seems to me that what happens is that, you know, we've got one natural disaster mm -hmm. after another after another, and that the relief organizations all sort of focus on what's immediate, yes. which is, makes a whole lot of mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just had the, the, the Japan yes. uh, situation, and mm -hmm. uh, the relief organizations were there, and that was, uh, you know, the world's media yes. um, <laughs> was focused on um, Japan. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Haiti got forgotten in that time? Yes, Haiti got forgotten. The way people look at it was we had a torrential downpour, now we have a trickle. Mm. So that's the, the space between that there now. The people who are going there are people who've probably been going for years, or the people that got involved in after the earthquake last year. And so now those few people are the ones that are really helping Haiti. The situation has not changed. It's, the only thing's missing really is the dead bodies from off the streets. But the poverty, the disease, the cholera, the HIV, lack of jobs, lack of um, family support, mm -hmm. it's still going on. The kids still need our help down there. And this is a situation that got 100 times worse by the devastation of the aftermath of that earthquake. So Allison, how can people then get involved, people who would love to be able to uh, give toys for these orphans in Haiti or would love to be able to help your organization out in some other way okay, They can give me a call because I do have a lot of different people, you know asking how can I help how can I come on board? Right. What I would like to do and because I want to spread the message and I know I can do it all by myself um, If they want to go to Haiti with me oh, Okay, so they can literally if they can pay their own way we can do fundraising whatever they can literally go down there because the more people know about it, the more people can show a video, the more people can talk to other people, it will grow. So my starting off by myself is one way, but if you really want to help, and you said, I want to do more than give a toy, because that's what I did. I did want to give more than just $50. You can literally come on a trip with me. Well, that sounds fantastic to me. Very inspiring yeah. stuff, Allison. <laughs> so I'm it's really- very cool. I'm glad that you've come on the show and shared uh, your message and, uh, and your mission um, and uh, your website, uh, anybody who wants to go on your website, it's 10,000toysforhaiti.com. Yes, 10,000toysforhaiti.com. Okay. Great. And we have some um, pictures up there and we'll continue doing that. We're going to revamp the website because, of course, last year when we started, we had a very little budget and, you know, people just helped out. Someone donated to the website and so on. So now we're, we're stepping up a bit, so we're going to be redoing the website, adding a lot more stuff. People can actually follow me in Haiti Underground. We're going to be posting videos for Christmas. That's what we did last year um, on Facebook as well, under 10,000 Toys for Haiti. People can go and join that group as well so, and support the kids. Well, thank you for coming on the show today, <laughs> and I wish you all the best with Thank it. you so much for having me. I'm Shannon, and for sharing. Again, it's all about sharing getting the message out there that people know what's going on and they can do anything to help. Donate a brand new toy. We're going to have locations up on the website soon, so you'll be able to drop them off at different places in the city. And also, if you want to just hear more about what you can do, you can give me a call, 416-880-3622. Well, thanks for that thanks information. So <laughs> well, I absolutely encourage you to get involved with uh, Allison's organization, Raising Toys for Orphans in Haiti. It sounds like a, a really worthwhile uh, endeavor to me. So um, now for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Special thanks to my friends and family for your ongoing support and of course to the folks at that channel. Now. 
If you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.